37 Republican senators put their names today to this open letter to Iran, informing Iran that it may not fully understand our constitutional system, and a warning that the Senate must ratify international agreements, which in reality isn't the case for a deal like this. And they go on to say that any nuclear agreement not voted in by Congress will be viewed as, quote, nothing more than an executive agreement between President Obama and Ayatollah Khamenei, which the next president could simply revoke with the stroke of a pen. Well, this president had a pointed response. I think it's somewhat ironic uh, to see uh, some members of Congress wanting to make common cause with the hardliners in Iran. Uh, it's an unusual coalition. It certainly is. Let's get right to it. Our first guest is one of the 47 senators whose signature is on that letter addressed to the Iranian leadership. He sits on the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources, which oversees policy on U.S. nuclear waste. The Republican from Montana, Senator Steve Daines, joins us. Thanks for being with us, sir. Thanks so much, John. Good to be with you. All right. We heard from the president there. We also have heard now from the Iranian foreign minister, Javad Zarif. He calls this a propaganda ploy. He tied the letter to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's speech in Congress. Zarif says a propaganda campaign has begun with Netanyahu's speech before Congress, and this is their second ploy. That is what Zarif said. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I heard the president's comments there. He said some members, this is 47 United States senators that signed this letter. Let me just step back and, uh, and remember our goal here is to ensure that Iran never has nuclear weapons capabilities. And we're staying focused on that end goal. I think we differ with the president on how to get there. But uh, the concern many of us have is the president is negotiating right now with one of the leading sponsors of state terrorism in the world. As Bibi Netanyahu said, uh, if Iran wants to be treated like a normal country, let it act like a normal country. Here, the leader of the Iranian special forces is considered to be responsible for up to 20 percent of the American casualties in Iraq. And so uh, it's important that we have Congress on the same page as the president. It's our constitutional duty, especially if we're dealing with something significant as stopping Iran from having nuclear weapons capabilities. Well, when did you first hear about uh, Senator Cotton's letter and when did you agree to sign it? Well, uh, you know, Tom and I uh, got to know each other during the campaign trail. Uh, we, were, we spent time traveling around the country campaigning together about what we believed in for our country, got to know Tom well. I have great respect for Tom Cotton. I mean, Tom is a guy with his, his Harvard education, both undergrad and law school, honors a student, goes off and serves his country in Iraq after 9-11, and then comes back, works in the private sector, and runs for the United States Senate. Uh, Tom and I um, talked about this issue last week. Uh, he explained what he was trying to do there. He asked if I would sign the letter. And as I reviewed it and looked it over. I thought this was the right thing to do. And what do you think it would take to get that number? You mentioned the 47 signees. If there were 67 signees, there would be some real clout there to push back against any presidential veto if he decides to make a plan. What do you think it would take to get that number up to 67? Well, I, I, and I think it's important uh, as we stand united, one, in support of Israel, and two, in ensuring that Iran never has uh, nuclear weapons capabilities, we need to have bipartisan support. And that's why, again, many of us are concerned about how politicized, uh, starting with Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech. Uh, I think it was very unfortunate that our vice president chose not to attend, uh, that there were some members of the Senate and the House on the Democratic side that chose not to attend. Yeah, where is Joe this Biden, is by the way? Because Joe Biden has been uh, implicated as doing essentially the same thing a long time ago when he was in the U.S. Senate. He hasn't uh, really answered that claim. Well, I mean, I, this is a time to stand up and be counted. This is a time to stand in, uni in as united Congress behind Israel. This existential threat of Iran, it's not only a threat to Israel, it's a threat to the United States, it's a threat to Western civilization and the entire world. And it's unfortunate that uh, Washington, D.C. is becoming divided now. This is the time to, to be united. Well, Senator, and, we got to go to know, a commercial break real quickly, and we're going to continue our conversation. But I want to ask you, before we step aside for a second, if you believe that you know, there's some advantage, at least to the fact that we are discussing this with Iran. Is, and, and, and as I think Susan Rice said, a, a deal is better than no deal. Any deal. Well, uh, I, I would agree with the point that, uh, that the discussions are helpful in terms of having an open dialogue. I think what we disagree on right now is the terms of this negotiation. But I, I, would not, I would not disagree with the fact that having a dialogue with Iran is a good thing. We disagree right now in terms of, of the, 
uh, the tenets of this uh, of this proposed negotiation. All right, fair enough. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with Senator Daines, and also joining us will be Dick Morris. We're going to talk about that supposed ban on the so-called green ammo. Plus, we are going to talk about Hillary Clinton in that press conference she may or may not be having today. More ahead here on Midpoint. John Bachman in for Ed Berliner today. Please stick around.